Welcome to the hub of the revolutionary system, London's post office tower. A tower for telecommunications and a darker, more secret role in Britain's Cold War defence. This stylish 60s building is also a great big British machine. The lift is now travelling at 1,400 feet per minute. At 188 metres, it was the tallest building in London at the time. Designed to make use of a technology called microwave transmission. Microwaves are high-frequency radio waves that could be used to transmit ten times as much data as the old cables. This is the business end of the tower. These horns behind me are the original 1960s microwave dishes. They sent out microwave signals to other towers roughly 25 miles away, which could beam the signals on across a network of 130 relay stations around the country. This entire network was monitored from inside the post office tower, down on floor 14. It's like time has stood still in here. It's absolutely fantastic. Virtually nothing has changed since it was built by the Ministry of Building and Public Works back in 1965. I feel like I'm in a time warp, surrounded by perfectly preserved electronics from a different age. Now well, that is a control board and a half. Fantastic mesh on the old tester number 192B forward slash WKC forward slash one. The cord tester. I'm not wearing my cords today. I haven't a clue what these things mean, but listen. You know that switch is on. Nowadays you get these horrible electronic press, is it on or is it off kind of switch, whereas these days you knew it was on. Gain normal, we'll leave it there. Without these electronics, you actually had to book a slot with an operator to make a long-distance call. Do you know, there are many sounds that conjure up the past, and that, to me, is certainly one of the sounds of the 60s. In addition to the Beatles and the Stones and the Dave Clark Five. And... With these machines and the new microwave network, the tower could handle over 150,000 telephone calls at once. Don't think I'd like to rewire this lot. Computers received, processed and transmitted the calls. Everything was done electronically. Only a few humans were needed for maintenance, and working in the tower could be, well, a lonely job. This is the post office tower. Come in, Portsmouth. Hello, Harry. Do you like to be beside the seaside? How's Wendy? Give her my love. Goodbye. But it wasn't just telephone calls beaming out of the microwave transmitters. The tower transformed the nation's television. The old cables could only transmit two channels of fuzzy black and white pictures. The microwave network could send out 40 channels at once. Now live television, outside broadcasts and simultaneous transmission to the entire country were possible. Through these transmitters passed some classic TV moments from the decade, like the 1966 World Cup final. They think it's all over. It is now. And of course, Britain's first colour TV image, Wimbledon 1967. Ooh, I say, what an absolute peach of a shot by the Australian. And on the 21st of July, 1969, the post office tower brought the British public the mind-blowing images of man's first step on the moon. Let's see who's on the line. <laughs> Just blow off the 50-year-old dust first. <clears throat> the Soviets are coming? When? The Cold War arms race was escalating. In 1962, US and Soviet tensions came to a head in the Cuban Missile Crisis, making the fear of nuclear war more real than ever. A war that the post office tower was designed to survive. Interestingly, one of the main reasons for making the tower round is so that it had more chance of withstanding a nuclear blast. It was thought that the curved shape would deflect the shock waves better than the sides of a square building. The hope was that while conventional cables would be easily destroyed, the new microwave network could be kept operational, keeping Prime Minister Harold Wilson in contact with the outside world. 
The hope was that if a bomb did hit Britain, the Prime Minister, safely smuggled deep inside his bunker in the Wiltshire Hills, could make a distress call via this tower to the rest of the world. Something along the lines of... Help! Now, where were we, Mary? Got any tobacco? The distress signal would be beamed down across the country to Goonhilly Satellite Station, then up to Telstar, the world's first communication satellite and then down to... Well, whoever was left and might be listening. Because of its Cold War defence connections, it was part of the Official Secrets Act. So, the post office tower was never actually marked on a map. There, blank. Now there's absolutely no chance of anyone ever finding a huge tower with massive satellite dishes attached to the side, is there? In fact, it wasn't just a rubbish official secret. It was actually a tourist attraction with a revolving restaurant on floor 34. Even Soviet dignitaries were invited to come and enjoy a prawn cocktail and a glass of Blue Nun. This was the UK's first and only revolving restaurant. This is where the cool, the rich, the sophisticated would come and hang out and generally look groovy as they let the evening skyline slowly drift by over a vodka martini or two. Shaken, not stirred. Hmm. Over four and a half million people flocked to the Butlin's owned restaurant to get a taste of the high life, including the leading stars of the day. The background, the greatest city in the world. Here, it would seem, the sky is really the limit. It might have seemed impressively high-tech at the time, but in fact, it was rather straightforward. Down through a trap door and underneath the chic restaurant, it looks more like a fairground ride. So here we have a fairly modest-looking electric motor, which, via this gearbox, turns a fairly meaty looking cog which drives the outer revolving section all 30 tons of it which sits on 48 what look to me like giant shopping trolley wheels it looks like an original motor doesn't it so it looks 60s with all the ribbing and radicon announced on the top of the gearbox there made in england bull yeah good stuff solid but in 1980, the restaurant closed to the public when its franchise ran out and London's only revolving dining room ground to a halt. But does it still work? Yes, it does. The little two-horsepower engine still powers the big cogwheel and rotates the entire 30-ton floor 360 degrees in just 22 minutes. Ah. Ah. Now, where's my cocktail? The spinning restaurant was the icing on the cake of a truly revolutionary great British machine. <laughs> 